Welcome to Lex's World everybody and today we're talking fungus gnats in your cannabis plants and how to identify and get rid of them. This will likely be the last of the pest control series for the time being since I think that my regular subscribers are getting a pretty good idea of how to troubleshoot insects now. So what are fungus gnats? Well, by the time you'll notice that you have them, they're flies that look like this. There's more than one species of gnats, some are brown and some are black, but they generally look like this, and what they all have in common is their super long legs. Really long. Gnats are also pretty big even without the legs. They're quite a bit bulkier than other common fly-type pests in cannabis that we've discussed before, like adult leaf miners or adult winged aphids. Here's a picture of gnats next to an American dime for scale. Really, as you can tell, it is all about the size and the leg length when it comes to identifying these things. So why might you get them and what do they do to your plants? Well, you're probably getting them because you're overwatering. Fungus gnats and their larvae survive in the top layer of your growing medium and they can only take hold when that medium is very wet. The fungus gnats really do eat the green algae type growth on the soil, which tends to happen in cases of overwatering when the top soil or top layer of the growing medium gets really soggy. They're actually most common in hydroponic setups that rely heavily on rock wool as a growing medium and have high humidity in the room. Now, I love rock wool, it's what I put my sprouts in, but its weakness is that it holds moisture so well that it tends to get soaked too easily and early in the grow. Often a green film starts to grow on it if you overwater slightly, and the next thing you know there's gnats flying around. Overfertilization can also lead to fungus gnats, just as a little side note. But if you don't have any of these variables, gnats shouldn't be happening. The reason that they're damaging to cannabis plants and pose a pretty significant threat in your grow room is because their larvae eat plant tissue, mostly roots, and they multiply fast. This is what their life cycle looks like, and as you can tell, it is pretty rapid. Obviously, since this is a fly-type insect in adult form, sticky traps are quite effective against them. Except that in the case of gnats, you want to place your sticky traps horizontally, just above the growing medium, not above the canopy, like with most other flying insect infestations. I'll link to sticky traps down in the video description, and while you're down there, check out today's sponsor, TNB Naturals, makers of the Enhancer CO2 system. But anyway, due to how fast the life cycle of gnats is and how aggressively they reproduce, sticky traps likely won't be enough to fully destroy the infestation, just to slow it way down. You can use predatory insects like Stratiolaleps simitus, a predatory mite formerly known as Hypoaspis miles. Or you can use rove beetles. Those aren't even all the options. There's a lot of predatory insects that are harmless to plants that eat fungus gnats. Those things are at the very bottom of the insect food chain. But don't use just one method of attack on them. Thankfully, since the larvae live in the topsoil, they're very susceptible to chemicals, specific ones like these, or any product not meant for caterpillars that contains a bacteria called BTI, like Vectobac, Natrol, or Bactemos. Other chemical spray options include pyrethrum, but you're gonna need to apply it several times, or you can use food grade hydrogen peroxide, which would also need several applications. Your final option, either for a serious infestation or for preemptive control, is to apply neem oil or insecticidal soap to your soil. Once again, I'm not a big fan of preemptive spraying like that. Instead of preemptive spraying, keep your grow room clean, use a mesh screen on your air intake, make sure there's good air circulation around the topsoil, watch those humidity levels in your air, and watch that overwatering, and you should be all right as far as gnats go. Actually, you should be all right as far as many types of insects go. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you found this useful, and we'll see you right back here next time.